Welcome to our lecture online. Here's part two of the summary of what you should study to prepare for a test dealing with projectile motion. So here we have some typical examples of what you may run into. And again, we don't have all the details on the board, but generally the way you want to approach them. So let's say here we have a projectile being launched from the ground at initial velocity at a particular angle, and we want to know how high it goes and how far it goes. Again, the way to start is to figure out how long the projectile will be in the air and use the exact same equation from the equation kinematics. You use your first one, you plug in the values, final height is zero, initial height is zero, initial velocity in the y direction will be the initial velocity times the sine of the angle 30 degrees, which is 10, minus a half gt squared. Remember, g is a minus 9.8. You solve for time. And then what you do is you plug that time into the equation that tells you that distance equals velocity times time in the x direction. So distance is equal to the velocity in the x direction, which is 20 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees, 17.32, times the time in the air, which you got from here, and that tells you how far the projectile went. If you want to know how high the projectile goes, you know that it takes just as long to get to the maximum height as it could takes to come back down, so you take the time in the air, half of the original value, then you use the equation, um, where did I go? Oh, here we go. So the time is 1.02, then you plug that back in the original equation to find the height at that time, which would be 5.1 meters. We can solve for an equation in general. We can use this approach and say, okay, instead of plugging in numbers, I'm going to keep what these things are in terms of velocity, initial velocity, the angle, and so forth. So this equation then becomes this. Final height, initial height, initial velocity in the y direction times time, plus a half gt squared. If we solve this equation for time in general, we get an expression for time, which is twice the initial velocity times the sine of the angle divided by the absolute value of g. Then you find distance equals velocity times time, so you take your velocity in the x direction, which is v initial times the cosine of theta, multiply that times time, which is this, and you get the general equation for the range of a projectile motion. In other words, it is this problem solved in general, now you get an equation. So all you have to do is plug in the initial velocity, the sine of twice the angle, divide by g, and you get the range of the projectile. If you want to find the height of projectile, the maximum height that it reaches, we can use this third equation right here. We can say that the final velocity in the y direction must be zero when we reach the maximum height. That's when the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity in the y direction is going to be initial velocity times the sine of the angle. So we need to square that and then plus 2g times the change in height, which is then the maximum height. You solve this for h, and now you have a general equation for the maximum height reached by a projectile, which is the initial velocity squared times the sine of theta squared divided by twice g. And then a typical problem which you may run into is, um, let's see here. Oh, okay. Let me, let me refer back. Now we go to 8. I guess I was changing the order, but let's go to example 8. Here, we need to find the angle given the range. So let's say that we're given that the projectile reached a particular range. You're given the initial velocity. What is the angle at which you need to shoot the projectile in order to find that, uh, in, in order to reach that particular given range? So what we can do there is we can take the range equation and solve that equation for the angle. So multiply r times g divided by v initial squared, you end up with the sine of 2 theta. Then you take the inverse of that, and therefore 2 theta equals the inverse sine of that quantity. And that's how you find the unknown angle required to find uh, the unknown angle given the distance and given the initial velocity. And finally, you might be given something where you say, can you clear the wall? Will this projectile clear the wall? Let's say at 25 meters distance, there's a wall two meters high. You shoot a projectile at an angle of 30 degrees with initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Will you clear the wall? Again, you find time in the air, but this time you want to know time in the air when you reach the distance of the wall, right? So the height at that point, well, let's say that the height at that point would be two meters, because that's what you want to put down. You want to know how long it will take uh, before you reach a height of two meters. The initial height is zero. 
The initial velocity in the y direction, again, it's going to be 20 times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 10, and plus a half gt squared, g being a minus 9.8. So there's your quadratic equation again. When you solve it for time, you get two times. You get 0.225 and you get 1.816. You wonder, why do, I two why do I have two different times? Well, you reach two meters on the way up and you reach two meters on the way down. So you'll have two separate times. That's on the way up and that's on the way down. So you need the one on the way down. Then you want to know, well, how far did you travel by the time you reach a height of two meters? Did you travel not quite 25 meters, then you'll hit the wall? Did you tra travel 25 meters and you just hit the top of the wall? If you travel more than 25 meters, by the time you hit a height of two meters, then you went past the wall. So we multiply the velocity in the x direction, 17.32, times the time in the air, 1.816, and you end up with 31.45, which is further than where the wall is. So you reach a height of two meters beyond the wall, so you will not hit the wall. If this number had been less than 25 meters, then you either would hit the wall or you hit the ground before you hit the wall. And that is how it's done.